Dennis, tell her to hang up the other one and pick up one.
Mr. President, Mrs. Regan, c'est pour moi un grand honneur et un grand privilège de vous accueillir au Canada. Nous entamons aujourd'hui un dialogue qui, au cours des deux prochains jours, consacrera les intentions de nos pays respectifs au regard de questions d'une importance capitale à notre époque. These are challenging and progressive days in the course of Canadian-American relations. Our past speaks with eloquence to the events of the present. It reminds us that among the family of nations, there exists no relationship more kindred and trusting than ours, and that we share the responsibility of providing for an imperfect world an example of two neighboring countries sharing many values and willing to negotiate in good faith those issues upon which we might from time to time disagree. The ongoing stability of our bilateral relations offers a compelling example of cooperative diplomacy, and we commend the efforts of the United States in sustaining and respecting this very proud achievement. Mr. President, important issues including trade and environment, fill the agenda and demand much of those whose duty it is to discuss and resolve them in the interest of both our peoples. The prospect of a fair and judicious determination of these complex matters is at the same time an invitation to leadership and to greatness. It is a rare and fleeting moment for us to capture the hand of destiny and bend it to our will and the mutual benefit of all. May we prove ourselves worthy of the strict demands placed upon us by our people, our history, and by the opportunities now before us. Welcome, Mr. President. Your Excellency, Nancy and I are delighted to be in Canada again. It was our privilege in the winter of 1981 to make our first foreign visit as President and First Lady to our neighbors in this proud, lovely capital city. And we still fondly remember the warm and friendly welcome we received in Quebec two years ago. As before, and I hope as always, we come as friends and partners sharing similar dreams and goals for our people, peace, freedom, and prosperity. And working together, we have gone far toward making those dreams a reality. No two countries in the world, as you have said, for example, have as great a range of trade and investment exchanges at all levels, from an individual's vacation trip to a mammoth contract for electric power as the United States and Canada. No two countries trade more with each other. No two countries invest in each other's industry or engage in leisure activities in our neighbors' playgrounds to the extent that we do. And the citizens of both our countries, as businessmen, farmers, workers, and consumers, have benefited accordingly. The Canadian writer Stephen Leacock said of our border, by an odd chance, the 49th parallel, an astronomical line, turned out to mean something. Not just a point of navigational reference, it became a line appropriately inscribed in the heavens that symbolizes the meeting place of two great free nations, two nations whose enduring friendship stands as an example of peace and harmony to the all too troubled world. But we have significant matters to discuss during our stay here. This is an important prelude to the upcoming economic summit in Venice. But I would like to emphasize, Your Excellency, that our economic relationship, call it the business of being neighbors, is only a small part of the future that we share. Speaking for all Americans on our side of the border, the best part for us 
is simply our good fortune to share this beautiful continent with the people of your great country. With that thought, and with deep appreciation for your kind words of welcome, let me say, nous sommes très heureux d'être ici parmi des amis.